Kim King was born in 1945, and immediately, as a young man, he represented everything that the city of Atlanta stood for. He was hardworking, he was driven, he was intense, and he was right in the middle of a burgeoning metroplex, a metropolis, the metropolis that was the busy, bustling city of Atlanta. He was, and I can truly appreciate this, a man who loved his home city. In 1959, he enrolled in Brown High School. And as a freshman, well, first of all, let's back up and remember what Brown High School was in those days. As Brad Walsh likes to point out to us, Brad Walsh, our resident historian at the TCA, who puts together the Ever Wonder portion of our program every week, he says, and I quote now, to put it bluntly, Brown High School was mediocrity defined. Some years above 500, some years below, but for the most part, they were right at 500. As a sophomore, King won the starting quarterback position, and that year, the Rebels finished the year at 1-8-1. and one. So, that was, well, one of the worst years that they had in their history. Then came their junior season, his junior season, where the Rebels did a complete 180 and finished the year at 9-1. and one. Now, all of a sudden, one of the great years in program history. Not just one of the great years in program history, but Kim King had one of the great years for a quarterback in the history of this state up to that point. He finished his junior season with 1,204 yards and 19 passing touchdowns. Pardon me. That, of course, a big number in those days. But this is incredible. Kim King, in his junior season of 1961, finished the year as All-City and All-State in football, baseball, and basketball. Then came his junior year, uh, his senior year, pardon me. In that senior year, well, Brown fell right back into the pattern that so many had grown accustomed to. They finished the year at six and four. And that year, Kim, well, he broke his own passing records. He went for 1,233 in that senior season and threw for 20 touchdowns. He was deemed by all the newspapers in Atlanta as the king of the quarterbacks. His exploits on the football field and the diamond and of course the hard courts gave him, garnered him national attention. He had offers for Major League Baseball scouts, from college basketball programs, and of course from some of the preeminent football programs across the country. Just a sample, Southern California, Notre Dame, and of course many of the preeminent programs in the South. But Kim King's heart well, it belonged to the city of Atlanta, and he ended up turning his attention and playing for Bobby Dodd in the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. He had a great career at Georgia Tech. They won a lot of games at Georgia Tech, and of course, he had a fine, fine career where he was dubbed the young left-hander by the legendary Georgia Tech broadcaster, Al Soraldo. But as important as his playing days are, and that's of course what we focus on a lot here in the All Sports Report, his his impact on the city of Atlanta and the state and really the southeast after his athletic days really just as important. This is a guy that a lot of you out there may not know, especially some of you younger guys who aren't into history. Of course, a lot of you older folks out there will remember. Kim King had a great influence on many, many facets of life in Atlanta. Finance, politics, of course sports, but just a litany of impactful uh, moments for Kim King as a businessman after his playing days. He is quite simply a legend in the city of Atlanta, not just athletically. But let's take a look at some of the accolades that he's received since his playing days. He's a member of the Georgia Tech Hall of Fame, the Georgia Sports Hall of Fame. He was named as Georgia Tech's, uh, one of Georgia Tech's 50 greatest athletes of the 20th century. He, uh, of course, won the Georgia Tech Total Person Alumnus Award and, as many of you know out there, he spent some time working with Al Serraldo as a color commentator on the radio broadcasts for Georgia Tech football. He was a founder of Kim King Associates Incorporated, who built the Synergy Complex in Midtown and uh, numerous other major complexes across Atlanta, the state of Georgia, and uh, the southeast. He was, at one point, the finance chairman for Governor Roy Barnes' uh, gubernatorial campaign. He was chairman for the Georgia Public Broadcasting Company, and for a short time, he was the president of the Touchdown Club of Atlanta. In 2004, Kim King unfortunately lost his battle with leukemia and passed away at the age of 58. Donald Kimbrough King is a legend in Atlanta and a legend in the state of Georgia. And of course, 
He was the touchdown club of Atlanta's back of the year in 1962. When he was asked late in his life, what would be the one regret that you could point to from any point in your life? He said, you know, and he answered this quickly, by the way. He said, you know, if I had one regret, it would be that in my three years as a starting quarterback for Georgia Tech, not once did we beat the University of Georgia. <laughs> what a great answer from a great man in the history of Atlanta and the state of Georgia.